This is not an opinionated video. It's an informative video with scientific findings and facts based on my research. My resources are cited in the pastebin link found in my description. I do want to give a disclosure. Because abnormal behavior in primates often comes from poor living conditions and psychological trauma to the animal, this may not be everyone's cup of tea and I want to give you the opportunity to back out now as some examples may be too sad. Behavior is a very complex subject and it's something that has been studied with primates for years and it's still being studied. I will discuss the common abnormal behaviors in macaques and I will try to keep this subject to the basics. What is considered abnormal behavior in primates? To know abnormal behavior, you must know what macaques are like when they are in good care. Macaques that are well cared for, appear relaxed, even when there's social tensions amongst the troop or group. They will spend time grooming, resting in close body contact, foraging, and don't appear stressed. Abnormal behaviors are behaviors they wouldn't typically develop in the wild, but in captivity. They are repetitive actions that occur frequently. It's important for you to know that the type of abnormal behaviors vary in species, gender, and even age. But can simply differ from animal to animal. They can be mild to severe. What causes abnormalities? There is no one specific cause, only risk factors. However, abnormal behaviors almost always occur when a monkey is deprived of a need. Abnormal behavior is developed in any kind of captivity setting like labs, sanctuaries, zoos, breeding facilities, and as pets. While in captivity, these are physiological responses to their poor well-being. That of which could have occurred in the past or present. Physiological responses are automatic reactions that triggers a physical response. Some abnormal behavior can be corrected by changing their care. But, there have been studies shown that some behaviors can continue to be lifelong, such as those seen with social abnormalities, which will be discussed later. The biggest risk factors are Maternal deprivation I want to go in depth on this specific risk factor possibly in another video, so I'll be brief for now. Maternal deprivation is when an infant is separated from their mother before the age of one years old and hand-reared. They can develop abnormal behaviors from being separated at birth, or at any time between the first year. The younger the baby is when separated from their mother the more risk they have of developing abnormal behaviors. This risk factor also has a high potential of developing long-term or lifelong abnormal behaviors. Specifically, social abnormalities. Mothers have important roles that humans cannot provide for them. The major thing their mothers teaches them is the social norms appropriate for their development and hierarchical roles within their own kind. The way a mother communicates with her young cannot be replaced with humans. Some studies suggest that mothers play a big role in helping regulate emotional health in their infants. It also has been studied that being raised with a mother will teach their daughters how to be a mother's themselves as well as teach their offspring. Of course the mothers also show them how to search for food and other necessities for their survival. Social isolation. This is also one of the biggest risk factors for long-term abnormal behaviors. Primates are highly social animals and normally live in large groups in the wild. When individually housing monkeys in a cage, some say it is similar to solitary confinement. Even if their senses are stimulated, caging them alone can cause suffering. It is suggested they're housed in pairs because introduction to unfamiliar members can be dangerous or too stressful for some primates. For some young primates, if not all, being housed with their mother alone isn't enough. They need peer-to-peer -peer socializing. This is because they need complex stimulating environments to fit their needs, which includes socializing. One study suggests that isolation and the lack of stimuli causes a trance-like state in macaques. This trance-like state will seem as though the monkey isn't in tune to their surroundings. Much like this macaque here. She's an abandoned pet. 
you can still see the marks of her chained neck. I don't know what became of her. But you will notice the starry-eyed look, then she seemingly doesn't even notice another monkey was approaching her. She paces back and forth as if she's still in a cage. Her reaction to being attacked by that approaching monkey isn't normal. She doesn't smack her lips to make peace. She still has the fixated glazed look, even after being attacked. This is a perfect example of maternal deprivation, social isolation and possibly the lack of stimuli. Lack of stimuli, this can lead to boredom. Macaques and other primates need an array of things to stimulate their senses. Such as, a variety of color or things to look at. Some places use mirrors, pictures or paintings for the monkeys to look at. They also need a variety of taste in their foods, different sounds to hear, and things to touch and smell. Also activities that encourage foraging. Without stimuli it's observed that repetitive, invariant behavior patterns are seen with no obvious goal or function. I will show examples of these soon. Sunlight is one of the most important things. It is preferred that primates are kept outdoors or at least a large windowed area. If they're held indoors they must have access to sunlight. Sunlight gives them the vitamins they need. It's the best thing for stimulation. The change in scenery as weather or seasons change, going from day to night stimulates them. So does the sounds of other creatures, the smells in the air as well as being able to forage. They should at least be able to have an array of food in which they must get themselves. Enclosure size can be a factor. Primates typically do better in bigger enclosures with perches and things to climb to prevent boredom and to promote exercise. A blank room with nothing to play with or look at, touch or feel, climb without any of those other things I listed, causes suffering, especially when left alone. Now let's go through the different types of abnormal behaviors that have been observed in macaques. Increased or abnormal aggression. This is often accompanied by restlessness. This aggression can be on a human or towards another animal. It's often not provoked. Here's examples of what this could look like. Here you will notice this monkey's hair is standing up, her ears are pulled back and she's doing this raspy-like noise. This is called a bark. Yes, the same name as a dog's bark, though it sounds different. This shows she's in an highly agitated state. But this behavior isn't provoked and she's displaying abnormal aggression towards her captor. Excessive fear, withdrawn, and hiding. As social animals, this is not a normal behavior. This is a behavior seen in monkeys that have maternal deprivation and social isolation among other factors. Over-grooming. This can be on themselves or others. This is indicative to a social stress. If tensions are frequently high within a troop or group, a monkey will over-groom others. Overgrooming themselves can be indicative to boredom and or stress, as a result of social isolation such as those monkeys who are housed by themselves. Sometimes overgrooming can lead to regurgitation from overgrooming and ingesting hair. 
Hair plucking is a stress-induced behavior, can be seen in those who are socially isolated or when tensions are high among others. This is sometimes considered a self-harm behavior. Hair plucking can be administered on themselves or other monkeys. Boredom may also influence a primate to pluck. This example is stress-induced. Failure to mate. In some cases, there may be physical health-related reasons this occurs or psychological. Primates that are depressed and socially withdrawn will have a lack of interest. Macaques can suffer from depression, and this is typically one social abnormality seen in depressed macaques and other primates. Killing or the neglect of their young. It's rare for a mother macaque to kill or neglect their own young. This is true for many other primates as well. If this occurs then social tensions could be high and or the mother is stressed. There are other suggested theories on why this occurs, but those are the two most common contributing factors seen in this abnormal behavior. Keep in mind these are only risk factors and many factors can come to play. Neglect is when a mother will not feed, carry, or look after her young despite being within close proximity. The neglect is blatantly obvious. There will be little to no interest. They won't intervene even if others interact or attack their infant. It will be as if the infant isn't even theirs. Neglect from macaque mothers is often manipulated on social media with normal behaviors. The manipulators are often using thumbnails and titles that perceive the mothers as harmful or cruel. Normal behaviors such as refusing to nurse due to weaning, wanting a break from holding their baby, and even stealing their own baby's food is not neglect. Those are done for survival reasons and with a purpose that is beneficial of their baby's survival as well, despite how it looks. Increased scratching. Let's go back to the monkey that looked as if they were in a trance-like state. After the juvenile male attacked her, she suddenly had an increase in her scratching. This is stress-induced behavior. A monkey will impulsively scratch when social mm -hmm. tensions are high and stressful. It can be seen when primates were formerly socially isolated and then become socially introduced or when there is an aggressor around. Self-hugging. This is a means to self-soothe and is often accompanied with social isolation or of those who are socially withdrawn and in those who hide in the corner of an enclosure. Self-clasping. This occurs when tensions amongst a troop or group are high. This is an abnormal fear response as well as stress. Seen as an abnormal social behavior, but also a coping mechanism to self-soothe. Studies show that primates that do this tend to have higher heart rates. Self-clasping is when they are grasping at their chest or abdomen and this is usually performed when they are approached. Restlessness. Restlessness is when a primate is under-stimulated and or socially isolated. Husbandry and boredom also has a factor in this. Restlessness is often accompanied with aggression and or other abnormal locomotion behaviors. Jumping, circling, pacing, flips, somersaults, spins, rocking and bobbing are all repetitive, invariant behavior patterns with no obvious goal or function. These behaviors will vary between individuals. Again, these behaviors can be seen in those who have had a lack of stimuli or are stressed. These behaviors can in fact be used to de-stress themselves from boredom, poor living conditions, and social isolation. Bizarre posture. Bizarre posture is holding a seemingly uncomfortable pose or contorted position. This is often accompanied with other abnormal behaviors, such as a variety of frequent movements like pacing and or aggression. There are some correlation to social environments and stress with this behavior. Though, 
this behavior could use some more exploration in studies. Self-oral. This is an attempt for the monkey to comfort themselves and it simulates as a mother's tea. This is due to maternal deprivation. They perform this self-oral typically on fingers, toes, tail and males sometimes choose their genitals. All mammals are born with the urge to suckle. This is how they find the teat shortly after being born. This doesn't just provide an oral fixation, but it's for comfort and relieve stress. This is why mothers are so important to help regulate emotions. Self-oral only provides limited comfort and is one of the biggest signs that a macaque was separated from their mother before the age of one years old. Regurgitating In macaques, regurgitating is a sign that something isn't right with their well-being. This can be caused by stress but also by having an inability to digest their food or because they ingested too much hair or fur from over-grooming. Refusing to eat and overeating These are self-explanatory as to why these are abnormal behaviors. If a macaque is refusing to eat or is overeating then there's something wrong with their well-being. That of which could be caused from something physical or mental. This next category of behavior is a topic that YouTube may misinterpret as against community guidelines. Although in the context of this video, I don't think it is at all against TOS. So I will make myself very clear when talking about this next category of abnormal behavior in primates. Abnormal behaviors in general aren't typically harmful. However, there are abnormal behaviors that are considered as self-harm. Self-harm behaviors in primates are not at all the same as self-harm behaviors seen in humans. These are physiological behaviors meaning it's not a choice to self-harm. It's an involuntary response and there is no foresight to perform them or planning. It's an impulse like the need to scratch, only they lack the ability to not itch. It's repetitive and habitual behavior. Often self-harm behaviors in macaques don't cause injury at all. In the times it does, the wounds are superficial. Only when stress depresses their immune system does the more serious injuries lead into infection. These behaviors in macaques specifically is a response to attempt to cope with chronic stress within a social environment. Once self-harm behaviors are present they are hard to stop or correct because of this impulse and habit. Self-harm behaviors seen in macaques are Self-biting Self-hitting Eye-poking Also known as saluting, which is placing or pressing a finger on the eyelid or eyebrow similar to a salute. Excessive rough hair pulling Aggressive scratching Self-harm behaviors in macaques often coexist with FLS, floating limb syndrome, therefore, FLS can be considered as a self-harm behavior. Floating limb syndrome is when a primate moves their limb in a direction with no purpose or function. The limb can startle them and they respond by attacking their own limb. It's described as if the limb is not part of the monkey's body. They believe if a monkey has just the behavior of self-biting or just a floating limb, there's a higher chance they will develop both self-biting and FLS together at some point. FLS can be mild to severe just like many other abnormal behaviors. Here's examples of FLS. Notice they're a combination of self-harm behaviors, such as self-hitting, slapping, hair pulling, biting. Again, this usually doesn't lead into any serious complications or injury. To recap, abnormal behaviors comes in a variety of forms and manifests differently for each animal. Some have multiple abnormal behaviors in a variety of ways and risk factors. 
physical wounds, disease, psychological stress, maternal deprivation, lack of stimuli, social isolation, all influence the well-being of an animal. There are some abnormal behaviors that I haven't listed. Only because I wanted to speak on the ones most commonly seen in macaques. Keep in mind that abnormal behaviors are behaviors not typically seen in the wild. Often they are repetitive and serve no purpose. Frequency in the behavior matters when considering whether the behavior is abnormal or not. Abnormal behavior shows that a macaque has or is currently suffering. It is important to understand that many abnormal behaviors affects their social structure particularly when it comes to the macaques that we often see being exploited on social media. This is because they were hand-reared and separated at birth or before one years old. They were treated poorly and weren't properly cared for. Many were even abused and or neglected. They have the highest risks of having long-lasting abnormal social behaviors. Humans interfering and causing ongoing stress can increase the occurrence of abnormal behaviors even though they are now released. I will eventually do a part 2 to abnormal behavior to go in depth on maternal separation and social isolation. I'll also speak about a few behaviors that need to be explored more by primatologist. However, for now, I don't want to fill you up with too much information at once so I will end this one here. Thanks for watching.